Good morning, ladies. And men. I have some men followers as well. So, morning, ladies and gentlemen. Does that work better? Okay, so, back from London. Um, I had a really, really good meeting with Dr. Gillian Ostrowski yesterday. Um, so, I think I'm going to be posting some more stuff about what she had to say. Um, because a lot of you have been asking questions about on Downsatron and she was, she was quite informative about that. So I will do that separately to this post. Um, however, I did promise you the response that we had from the Royal College of, uh, GPs. Um, a little bit of background. I basically wrote to them and said, look, these are the types of comments that, um, I'm receiving from women who have suffered or are currently suffering with high premises. I think you should know about these what are your thoughts on this, um, comments like not being believed, being turned away, not being given access to any kind of medication and, you know, basically being told that there isn't anything medically that can be done. So this is a response we had back. Professor Helen Stokes Lampard, chair of the Royal College of GPs said, vomiting in pregnancy is hugely varied between people it can be very debilitating for many and GPs are very sympathetic to the impact that severe nausea can have on the health of pregnant women especially at a time when they often already feel anxious and vulnerable okay morning sickness is different for every woman but GPs will always try to find a solution that works for the individual patient always starting with non-medication treatments such as recommending plenty of rest Staying hydrated and avoiding foods or smells that make the patient feel sick. However, a significant number of women can be helped by anti-sickness medication. The majority of these drugs are not formally licensed for use in pregnant women, although there are years of experience demonstrating that they are safe. There is currently only one drug that is actually licensed for morning sickness in general practice, but it is not in widespread use, and many women will only consider this as an absolute last resort once every other avenue has been explored. GPs are family doctors who want the very best for all our patients, so we refute any suggestion that many GPs are not giving women accurate information about how to manage their nausea, or that women are being turned away. The GP consultation is a non-judgmental space where all patients can share their concerns with highly trained and highly skilled experts in the whole person. So to accuse us wholesale of not believing pregnant women is undeserved and very unfair. Hyperemesis gravidarum is a specific severe and potentially life-threatening condition causing severe dehydration and weight loss that in some cases can only be treated by remaining in hospital. In these situations, GPs and their teams will work closely with their patient and consider specialist intervention in order to find the right solution. So my initial response to this comment was I was actually speechless. Um, <laughs> so many things to pick up on here. I mean, in every paragraph, apart from um, the last paragraph, they talk about morning sickness, which isn't what we're talking about. There is no woman I know that has gone to their GP or to any doctor because they have morning sickness. They know what it is, they're expecting it. They can easily go online and see there are, you know, lots of tips about um, eating little and often, protein rich diet is supposed to be quite good, obviously ginger. Um, you know, yes, plenty of rest and, and trying to, to stay hydrated, um, that's fine. We're not talking about that. If you have hyperemesis gravidarum, the likelihood is you won't even get to your doctor at the first signs of sickness because you will think that it's just normal morning sickness. It's when you get to the point where you haven't eaten for days, or in my case, when I realised this was something was very, very serious when I couldn't even keep water down. And that is when I went for help. And I was asked to <laughs> rehydrate myself with rehydration sachets um, which I posted about earlier, which was Im impossible, defeating the object. I couldn't keep anything down, so I wasn't able to rehydrate myself. Um, and I, I was given anti-sickness medication at that point, but it didn't do anything for me. There was no team in place, which they've talked about. 
um, you know, working closely with me as a patient to consider specialist intervention to find the right solution. That didn't happen. I had to fight for any type of intervention, in, intervention and any type of um, solution. So I'm quite saddened by the response, to be honest, but at the same time, um, the flip side is that I think this just backs up everything that every single one of you have been saying to me, every single story that you've had, this just backs up. The Royal College of GPs, um, you know, the, the very college that look after GPs and their continual um, professional development, um, are constantly putting out guidelines, shaping the way that GPs work in, in our country. They just don't get it. Which, like I said, is really sad. But I just think, you know, it it supports everything that we've been saying. So let me know what you think.